Welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we looked at the P part of the PID and the I part of the PID separately. And we saw that if you introduce an integral part in the PID, it's responsible for maintaining zero steady state error. And if we just use the proportional controller, there's always going to be inherent steady state error, even though we will effectively reject disturbances, at least for the system in that we're studying. So right now, I'm going to introduce the concept of a PID and why we use PIDs per se. And all a PID is, is the integral controller with its gain block and the proportional controller with its, plain block, with its gain block added together. So it's just the sum of the integral and the proportional part. The proportional part will give us the, the loop gain that we desire whereas this is responsible mainly for maintaining steady state error, zero steady state error. So at steady state, we should see that essentially the output from the proportional part is zero because at steady state part, we generally don't want anything coming out of here, whereas this should just give us enough output to maintain zero steady state error. So if I run this now, Just bear with my system. I am running it for 30 seconds after all. So it will, it is going to take a while. There we go. Right, so if I run the system and we observe the output to a step response, rather to a step input. Why do I have so many windows open? Hmm. There we go. There we go. So we do overshoot slightly, but we reach steady state quite quickly. And this is more of a desirable response because you want a small overshoot and you want to reach steady, you want to settle very quickly, which is what we're doing here. We reach steady state very quickly and we are effectively tracking at one. So that's basically what we desire. And in order to do this, we have to adjust the gains for the integrator and the gains for the proportional part. And doing that is called tuning. So in this case, we have a PI controller. We haven't integrated the, the D part into it yet, where the D is the derivative part. And adjusting these gains is called tuning. There are many rules of doing this. Um, Ziegler Nicholas is one of them. Uh, I think the p-value method is another one. There are, there are countless ways you could do it using the root locus method. You can use frequency response methods and most of these rules are discussed in classical control systems textbooks. So what I am going to teach is using MATLAB to tune these blocks and we'll later use MATLAB to tune um, the bar converter that we started out with in the previous lectures. But one thing that I want to bring to your attention, like I said, is that at steady state, the output in blue from the proportional controller is essentially zero. And the output from the integrator is a finite value because it's required to maintain steady state, right? So that's essentially a one coming out of there because we're inputting a one there. If we were to change this to a two, then the yellow curve would jump up to two. Let me illustrate quickly. And the, the point of illustration here, um, final value, let's make that a two. The point I'm trying to illustrate here is that the integral part is basically what's responsible for maintaining steady zero steady state error. So now you're thinking, wow, this is brilliant. Then if I've got an integrator in my system, then I'm brilliant. I'm covered. As you can see, that has jumped to two. If we change that to five, it will jump to five and so on and so forth. Right. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm covered. If I've got an integrator, I don't need anything else. But the integrator is not all good. There is a concept I want to introduce to you called wind up. 
And in order to introduce this, in order to show this to you, I need to conduct a bit of an experiment. Uh, goodness, let's make this a saturator. And I need you to think of this in the practical in a practical landscape. Um, if you're controlling a valve, let's assume that this is a valve. A valve can either be fully open, which is 100% open, or fully closed, which is 0% open. Or if it's duty cycle, that's going to be zero, between 0 and 1, you know? And there are many other aspects that have restrictions to them, which the PID doesn't know, All right? So what if we were restricted in the same manner what if this, this driving, this actuating signal was restricted to say one between one and negative one? Would we get the, would we still get the same response in the same time? And would there be any catastrophe related to that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the up step and the down step. So essentially, I'm going to model a pulse in order to illustrate the point I want to pull across. Oh, goodness. Um, it's a pulse generator. And I'm gonna set the period, I think, to, how long are we running? We're running for 30. So let me set the period to 50 to 30 and the width to 50%. So that could drop up to 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, that should be right about it. So let's run that and see what happens. Remember that we reached steady state at about three seconds in the previous simulation. But look at this now. In fact, what I should do is get two inputs on this oscilloscope so that you can see the reference signal alongside um, the response as well. So that you can see this part that's caused by the integrator winder and why we get wind up, which is the important part. Then we'll get into anti wind up controllers and whatnot, and how you implement that. All right, so what we want to bring in here is the reference signal. Let's make this a bit neat. Let's drag it all the way down and drag this to that way. That's better. So let's run this again. And now let's observe the output, right? So we do go up to the reference, but when we have to change values, that is when we now have to close this valve or when we have to, on the negative going of the duty cycle, the, cy the system still goes positive for a bit of time, couple of seconds actually, because remember these are finite seconds. So that's about what, two seconds? which is quite a lengthy period. So it does go up there for a second or two, then it drops down all the way and it actually undershoots badly, overshoots slightly and then settles. This is the result of integrator windup. Now, what is integrator windup? Integrator windup is caused by this over here. If you look where the yellow part is the output of the integrator controller. And the blue part or the blue curve is the output of the proportional controller. If you look at the output of the, of the integrator controller, it is far greater than one. So it's essentially telling this actuator to open that valve at 1,400%, 1, which is impossible. The valve can only be 100% open. And because the valve can only be 100% open, it'll keep integrating the error. In fact, let me bring up the error in, in another scope here so that this becomes a lot clearer. So we want the output and the error in this scope.
Right, so I've brought in os uh, an oscilloscope here or a scope, my lab terms. And what I want to measure is the error here, the first, um, the first input, and the second input is basically the output because we're not scaling the feedback in any way. Right. So if we look at the error in the first five seconds, So I've spoken about tuning integrators or rather PIDs. And the question now is, is there a way of tuning this automatically or using MATLAB? And the answer is yes. MATLAB simplifies the process of tuning PIDs. And if you've got this defined system over here, you can just get a PI block or a PID block. It's actually the same block. You just choose which controller you want. And if you go right over here, let me first change this to zero because I'd already tuned this. If you go right over here where it says tune, you click over there. Now what this is going to do is it's going to open the PID tuning app and you can use that to tune the system to your desired values, that being overshoot, settling time, rise time, et cetera, et cetera. By adjusting these little dials over here, if for instance, I want the system to respond a bit faster, but that will make the transient response undesirable because it'll result in a larger overshoot. Let me take it faster so that you can see. Right, so the overshoot is slightly larger, but then my I can then adjust my transient response to be a little more robust, which will increase my settling time slightly. Let's see, there we go. But now, will settle a lot longer. It'll take a lot longer for us to settle. Uh, we still haven't settled. Let's make it a little less robust. Now we're overshooting slightly because we're settling too fast, I guess. Let's bring this back a bit. There we go. A little more. We don't need to settle that quickly. And we can make this all more robust. That's a lot better. Now we're barely overshooting at all. When you're done, you update your block. And it will tell you here that the PID gains have been applied and the block response has been updated. You can then just close both of those windows, run your simulation. And you'll see that the output resembles what we saw over there. Now we're, we're tracking much better and our transient response is a lot better than it was. So that's how you tune a PID using MATLAB. So in the next video, we are actually going to tune the PID or a PID for our bug converter model that we came up with when we first started this video series. Then when we're done with that, I'm actually going to take you through the design of the actual bug converter that I used for, for the car design that I'm talking about that, um, that's in question. So yeah, do excuse my stumbling of words. I haven't had my morning coffee yet and it's freezing in South Africa. It's a cold winter's day. So like and subscribe, share this video with all your friends. If you'd like to get a hold of me on Telegram, I'm gonna drop my my telegram handle below and we'll have a chat. Goodbye for now.